On the eve of the new moon, it was dark. The dark clouds that had come up in the north have now spread and obscured the entire sky. Not a single star twinkled in the sky. Fireflies flying over the trees and bushes provided some light. The god who came with its help led the horse away. It is not clear where we are going, why we are going, and whether there will be any benefit from going. Kundave Prati's best friend is in danger. It is his duty to try to save her. Then there is God. Even after running for an hour the palanquin could not be found. Vandiyathevan thought that he had just got into a crazy job and stopped his horse. At that time, a noise was heard in the distance. Looked closely. It sounded like horse footsteps. Yes, a horse. I don't know if it was one horse or many horses. It may be the horsemen who guard the palanquin. Now you have to be careful. Don't suddenly get caught in the middle of a crowd. So Goddess Venati is also useless, his work will also go bad. Slowly he stopped and left the horse. He was certain that only one horse was going ahead. For a moment the horse seemed to be climbing a steep embankment. He wanted to stay hidden, not knowing what he was going to follow, so he looked around. A dilapidated mandapam was found next to it with a broken roof. He went near it and stopped the horse in the shelter of a terraced wall. He was staring in the dark with pain in his eyes at the horse that had gone ahead and mounted the hill. Who is there? The voice startled Vandiyadeva. It sounded like a familiar human voice to him. Maharaja. Slave, I am. A second voice was heard. For about a minute a torch light appeared where the voices were heard. A man came out from behind the tree with a torch in his hand. The horse was visible in its light. A man was seen sitting on the horse. It was confirmed that Madhurand Hakkar was the one on the horse. The horse on which the prince was riding spooked as the man standing on the ground picked up the torch. It lifted its forelegs and spun once. Then it began to flow and run a saddle. The horse stood on the bank of a wide canal. From that high bank the horse flowed into the flood of the canal. The man holding the lamp shouted Maharaja. Maharaja. Saying that, he jumped into the ditch after the horse. He jumped and fell. Devartha drowned in the flood of canal. The next moment Kananthakaram was surrounded by many times more than before. Meanwhile, it started to drizzle lightly. Between the sound of the trees swaying in the wind, the sound of the rain, and the dry shouts of the mandas, the voices of men and the footsteps of horses were confusedly heard. Vandiyathevan knew that Prince Madhurand Hagar was not a man known for that much courage. His heart was startled as to what might be the danger to Madhurand Hagar on Miranda's horse. The horse can run even if he stumbles while carrying him. Or he may have been pushed into the flood by the canal itself, or he may have been carried some distance and dumped somewhere else. Can the man with the torch follow the horse and save him? Did he stumble and fall in the flood? What should be done then? Looking for paradise? For a minute, he struggled with whether to go to Madhurand Hagar's aid. Vanatha Devi's whereabouts is unknown. But Madhurand Hagar was in danger before his eyes. Helping him is easy, he searched for him and found that there was no danger. Then there is the search for heaven. God. Why did he decide a little earlier that he would not interfere in any other unrelated matter? What is happening now? Vandiyadeva brought the horse out from the hiding place of the hall wall. He instinctively found his way through the darkness and drizzle towards the spot where the prince's horse had landed in the canal. He also got down into the canal and looked around carefully, but saw nothing. Somewhere in the distance, ah! Oh! Ee! -e -e. Da 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 da! Unidentified noises were heard. He climbed on the bank of the canal. He gazed beyond the ridge. Paddy fields were seen all along. Driving a horse through fields with mud and green crops is impossible. You have to go along the shore and look for it. On the banks of the canal, vines and brambles were thick. He led his horse along the narrow single track that ran between them. Rain above, slippery muddy ground, drain on one side, on the other side are paddy fields 
thorns all around. The horse trotted along. Oh time, a minute passed into an age. The drizzle was intensifying into rain. It was getting darker and darker. Vandiyadeva's heart was deep in thought. Why did Madhurandak Devar come alone on a horse? Where was he leaving to go? Who was the man who confronted him? Does this have anything to do with Vanati being carried away by some? What will happen to Vanati now? Why should we wake up in this dilemma? Can we see our work? Find Rajapat and reach Kanchi. How is that possible in this monsoon darkness? How can we decide that all these things are not related to us? How much benefit was there later in observing something unrelated to us in the Sambuvarayar palace of Kadampur? But walking along the banks of this canal tonight in the dark is not going to do any good. Dripping is the only benefit. If the horse stumbles somewhere and breaks his leg, the journey will be interrupted. It is necessary to go back and reach that ruined hall. We should leave again only after the rains. A flash of lightning flashed, and in its direct light, at a little distance, a horse was seen standing on a ridge. We just came. Go a little further and see that too. If Prince Madhurandhagar lends a helping hand in times of danger, it can be beneficial for many things later on. Vandiyadevan dropped the horse from the bank of the canal to the neighboring field. He directed the horse towards Kalatumd where it seemed to have stopped. As it approached Kalatumd, it presented itself as a huge black giant. Another flash of lightning and for a moment the horse stood on the hill. Vandiyadeva noticed that there was no man on the horse. The thunder struck. Fearing thunder and lightning, the horse started to run away again. There is no point in going any further. Somewhere on the side may be Madhuran Thakdeva who has fallen from his horse. So Vandiyathevan looked several times with his voice. Jim Jim Rim Rim his thunderous voice over the noise of the rain who's there? Who's there? That arose. Who's there? From all four sides. Who's there? The echo was heard. The rain was getting heavier. A gust of wind blew. Due to the speed of the wind, the raindrops hit back to the sides. The horse shivered. Vandiyadeva's body was also hit by the rain and started shivering with cold. There was no point in standing there anymore, Vandiyadeva turned his horse back the way he had come. He kept getting upset about his ignorance. At least we should not indulge in such strange things. We have to make sure that we have our work. The horse used its instincts to find its way and came to a stop near the ruined hall and poured a potion. It was then that Vandiyadeva came to this world from the world of thought. He got off the horse. The clothes he was wearing were dripping wet. They should be dried. That night he looked around the ruined hall to see if there was any unbroken part where he and his horse could stay. What would it be like to shoot a fire at the feet in the pouring rain outside? Vandiyadavan had to jump like that. The reason for that is nothing else, no ghost, no devil, the voice of a small child. Mother mother! How can you say that there is no demon, no devil? How could the child's voice be heard in that hall at that time? How can you tell it's not the voice of a demonic devil? See you. No ghost. No devil. Ghosts and devils are the imagination of ghosts. Mom. Mom. Boom. Boom. This is the voice of a human child. It was the terrible crying voice of S.E. who separated from his mother. Coming from the darkened part of the ruined hall. Is there only a child? Is there no one else? Mom. Mom. Boom. Boom. Who is there who recently visited the place where the voice came from? He said. Who is there? Echoed the child's voice. It's me. You? What are you doing in the dark? Come out. It's raining outside. The rain has stopped, come. Where's my mother? Mother is going to fetch you some milk. No, you lie. Are you coming out, shall I come in? If you come in, my hand is screaming. I'll stab you. Hey dad. Are you a great hero? I'll just come out and punch you. 
Who are you? Not a tiger. I'm not a tiger, a horse. Van Diathevan said. You lie, can a horse talk? Would you talk if you were a tiger? Mother said that if you come out there will be a tiger. It will probably jump up. I'm not a tiger, I won't pounce on you, come out without fear. Afraid? What am I afraid of? Saying that, a small child came out of the dark hall. By this time the rain had stopped well. The clouds parted a little and the stars were visible. Van Diathevan saw the child in the starlight. About four years old. From the light that was there, he knew that he was a very ideal child. A small silk cloth was worn around the waist. A necklace of gems was worn around the neck. To be a child of a big clan. Who is the mother who left this alone here? Why did she come here? Why did she leave the child? Meanwhile, the child also looked at Van Diathevan and said, You are not a horse, you are like a man. There's a horse too, look. Van Diathevan said. The child saw the horse. Oko. Did you bring it just for me? Didn't they say it would come to Palaku? The boy's reply created conflicting thoughts in Van Diadeva's mind. Who is this child? Why is he here alone? Isn't it amazing that such a small child is so fearless? Who had said they would send Palak for him? Why didn't it come? Who is Ivan's mother who left him? Where has she gone? Child. Why did your mother leave you? He asked. Mother has not left me, I have left her. Said the boy. Why did you leave? A horse came running. I said I can catch it and climb on it. Mother said no. I ran to catch the horse without her knowing. Is this the horse? No, it's a different horse. Then, how did you get here? The horse is not caught. The mother is also missing. It rained heavily. I came into this hall for that. Aren't you afraid to be alone in the dark? What's the fear? I'm like this every day. Not even a tiger is afraid. Mother is afraid, I am not afraid. I will swallow the fish and the tiger. I. Will the fish swallow the tiger? I'm no ordinary little fish. I'll swallow a big Capricorn fish, a whale. A tiger, a lion, an elephant. All kinds of thoughts started appearing in Van Diathevan's mind. Isn't the fish that swallows the tiger a miracle fish? Who would have taught this child? What's that noise over there? Asked the boy. Van Diathevan saw that a crowd was coming in the distance. Some in the crowd were holding firecrackers. A tooth was visible in the middle of them. Everyone was running with excitement. It appeared that there was a girl among them. There. Here there. Here. The riotous voices were heard. Someone in the crowd pointed to the ruined hall. That's it. Everyone ran towards the hall. There they are coming, the Palak is also coming. I don't like to get on the Palak. Will you take me on your horse? Asked the boy. The child's face, appearance and speech attracted Van Diadeva's mind. It seemed that he could be hugged and carried. But there was also some interruption in the mind. Do I have any other urgent business? Van Diathevan said. Where are you going? To Kanji. Kanchika. There lies my greatest enemy. Van Diathevan threw it away. He thought that even standing next to that child was evil. But there was no time to mount the horse. The crowd has come very close. Running is suspicious. Van Diathevan was also anxious to know what was going to happen with all this. So he stepped aside and stood in the dark by the side of the ruined wall. Here I am the boy went ahead and stood. The first to arrive was a girl. She was pumping because she was running. Ignoring it, she jumped and picked up the child and hugged him. Did Pandya do this? She said. Ravi Dasan came next to her. He came and stood by the boy's side and said, Emperor. Have you frightened us like this? He said. The boy laughed, I'll scare you like that. 
I asked for a horse. You brought the palanquin. He said. Saman Sambavan, I Tumpankari, Devaralan, etc., whom we have seen earlier, came and surrounded the boy. Emperor. What is one horse? We are bringing a thousand horses, ten thousand horses. Get on this palanquin today. Saman Sambavan said. I won't, I'll get on top of that horse, said the boy, pointing to the horse standing behind the wall. Just then they noticed the horse and Vandiyadeva standing next to it. Ravi Dasan's face burned with surprise, horror and hostility. Take two steps forward and say, you sinner. How did you get here? He asked. Devil. How did you get here from Kadakare? Vandiyathevan asked. Ravi Dasan laughed ha ha ha. Do you really think I'm the devil? He asked. Some people become devils after they die. You are a living devil. Vandiyathevan said. Meanwhile, the boy said, don't fight with him. I like him very much. He was my companion in the dark. He told me that he would kill a tiger if he came. Let him also come with us. Ravi Dasan went near the boy and said, Emperor. Let's take him too. Get on the palanquin today. He said. The boy went towards the palanquin like that. Ravi Dasan approached Vandiyathevan again and asked, What are you going to do now? He asked. Don't you have to say. Come with us. You know our secret too much before. You know even more now. We cannot leave you. Come. If I refuse to come with you. Impossible, I know you are a great monster. Yet there are twenty of us and you cannot escape from us. Are you saying you can't escape alive? You are a young soul. You have not experienced any of the pleasures of the world. Why should you give up your life in vain? Who would lay down his life in vain? Where are you calling, O oh one who bids you come with you? Where are you going? That's what I'm saying. Pavur is the youngest queen. Oko. I thought so. Where is Isla Irani today? The young queen has been coming to Tirapuram Bayam for so long. Will you come or not? I must go that way too. I saw that there was no one to guide me. Fortunately you came along. Let's go, come. Vandiyathevan said. Meanwhile the boy climbed the palanquin and the palanquin moved. Ravi Dasan's group went around it holding torches and raising various slogans. Vandiyadeva also followed them. Various thoughts floated in his mind. What is the fate of Vanati? I do not know. What happened to Madhurand Hagar? I do not know. What will be his destiny tonight? That too is unknown. There is no doubt that today we are going to learn about a conspiracy many times bigger than the one we found that day in the Kadampur mansion. So far so useful. But what happens after that? Will they let him escape alive? They will force themselves to join them. If you say no, they will see you as a victim. Perhaps because of Nandini's favor again. Vandiyadevan thought that Ravi Dasan had agreed to go with them when Ravi Dasan mentioned the name of the young queen of Palvur. It surprised him. This seems to be what the elders call Mayai and Moam. He knew for himself how many terrible conspiracies she was involved in. But if you get a chance to meet her, an interest arose in his mind to take advantage of it. Uncontrollably rose up against himself. Before he could think, his mouth answered I'm coming but what was the other way? As Ravi Dasan said, it is impossible to fight with so many people on your own. Given some time, some means of escape might emerge. Also, we can learn more clearly about this conspiratorial group and their intentions. Any means of escape may appear. Also, we can learn more clearly about this conspiratorial group and their intentions. Any means of escape may appear. Also, we can learn more clearly about this conspiratorial group and their intentions. Going Kanjika? That's where my main enemy is. Vandiyathevan was often reminded of what the little child had said in kindergarten. Who is that boy? Do they call him emperor? 
who did Akaruvan refer to as main enemy? Answers to all these questions were appearing in his mind. It was getting more and more terrifying to think about. God! When will all this end? Very soon, said a voice within him. The miraculous procession was going on. It went on and on without stopping for a moment, crossing fields, ditches, streams and forest ridges. Finally crossing the flooded Mani River and reaching the border of Tirapuram Bayam. The school entered the forest that knelt around the palm.